Okay, are you seeing it? Are we good? I'm only looking at my uh, on my phone. Oh, yeah, I guess so, because the ads are starting. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I see you. All right. But all I see is you. I don't know. Are you it might be set on. I'm only looking at my uh, on my phone. Oh, yeah. I guess. Okay, I'm gonna mute my computer here. All right, guys, can you see us? This is our first time we're doing this, so. Well, I'm looking at a monitor in here to, to monitor the chat because I had a dream that I didn't monitor the chat last night, and uh, we have Yakitori guy here on this one. So. All right. So I was supposed to do this before. So let, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm gonna put it this one. One second. This is amateur hour here. It's our first sign. We're gonna do a better first one. Yeah. We'll, we'll do a second one again. All right. So, anyways, let's do it this way. Welcome everybody to the first Way of Ramen live stream. We have the one and only Yakitori guy here. Yeah, maybe we should put it out on Instagram too, just in case. It's uh, going. I see it on my. It's it's going. I think we're good. Okay. So welcome to our first live stream. We got Yakitori guy here, and we're gonna learn how to break down some chickens today. I think it's like a super important skill to learn how to do this for both ramen and just general life, right? Like it's such a cheaper thing to do than mm -hmm. buying chicken breast in a package or thighs in a package. And um, so, yeah, let's get, I'm just, I was supposed to open this before, but I was running a little bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and open it. Um, as you're opening it, I can continue talking for you. Yes. But basically, yes. yeah. Uh, so today we're doing this live stream. We've never done this Zoom or I've never done this Zoom streaming onto YouTube. So this is sort of a test for both of us. So I'm excited to uh, basically collaborate and show the audience uh basically the community that you have your your ramen community how i break down chicken for yakitori but i'm assuming as long as we get the bones out you can use these for your ramen so um as you're opening these up i just want to show you guys basically i have my chicken right here this is a whole chicken i always recommend for people to use a whole chicken when making yakitori the main reason for that is if you buy chicken thighs or chicken breasts, you know, skinless breasts off of the stores in the packages or in the deli, it's already starting to get exposed to the air. You don't know when they broke it down. And whenever it's exposed to the air, it starts oxidizing. So you lose a lot of flavor, you lose a lot of texture quality. So I always recommend the whole chicken. And not only that, but you mentioned how basically it's much more economical. So this whole chicken, it's about maybe $15 at Whole Foods. This is a Mary's chicken. I always use Mary's. That's because it's available all over California, parts of Portland, Seattle. And I do a lot of these yakitori dinners around in different areas. So wherever I can get the same chicken, it really helps me out. So consistency helps me out. But I have here basically a cutting board, got that talent knee so it doesn't slip. I also have here, not sure what kind of knife we're using over there. What, what do you got there? I just have a regular chef's knife. Or got it that's totally fine i always recommend as long as you just have a sharp kitchen knife that's the most important so if you have a chance to if you have a wet stone obviously sharpen it but if not get it professionally sharpened it really just helps with the chicken breakdown process but the knife that i'm using today this is called a garaski and garaski means basically like a carcass breakdown chicken carcass breaking down knife and there's a garaski i have another knife right here let's see all right this one this is my honeski. Honeski just means basic bone. So they're essentially the same thing. They're both meant for cutting, breaking down chickens. I uh, can't really tell, but they're flat on one end. So it's a single beveled knife. And that way, basically, unlike a double bevel, basically, it's going to be much sharper. This one is a right-handed knife. Makes it just, oh, another thing to mention is in Western style, uh, breaking down a chicken, Basically, you're using sort of the 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 car um, the flexibility of the knife to sort of carve around the chicken, whereas with these Japanese uh, chicken cutting knives uh, technique, you're actually using the if you notice it's sort of a triangular tip on both of these knives, and that's a characteristic of these Japanese chicken cutting knives, where you're using these tips to really get into sort of the tips of the crevice, like in between the bones and muscles of the chicken, and what the chicken breakdown, what we're doing, a lot of people think chicken breakdown is basically cutting into the bones, butchering the bones apart. We're not doing any of that. So all we're doing is using our knives and sort of natural force to 
break apart the joints. So all the chicken that we have right here, basically, they're all, the only thing that's connecting it, so the bones are inside, but the only thing that are connecting it are the skins and the muscles and membranes. That's what's connecting it. And we're gonna use our knife to essentially just cut those apart. And instead of cutting through bone, we're only cutting through all the soft parts. All right, so you got your- How much you chicken out? Your... I, have, I have a first question, so Art. Yep. I, I put up a video, my last video, I was kind of like breaking down chicken and people are like, gross, you didn't rinse it. Are you supposed to rinse a chicken or just wipe it down? Or I wipe I, it I down, I wipe it down. Um, some shops will rinse a bit. Some shops will just wipe it down. Personally for me, I don't want to rinse because I don't want to introduce too much water into my chicken. Um, okay. It's just much more easier for me to work with a, a dry chicken. And as long as, you know, it's not like an old funky chicken that's all slimy. And if it's like an old funky slimy chicken, like I'm not going to use it for my yak. <laughs> yeah. So I'm always choosing the, the freshest yak that I can get. And I also recommend air chilled for that purpose too. Just the, the meat, at least for yak purpose, the, the muscle texture is much more nicer when it's air chilled versus if it's liquid chilled, then it's sort of mushy. So for me, oh. muscle firmness really helps for the end yak as well as when I'm cutting the cutting this chicken, having nice firm muscles really help. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention is there's one, I, I don't know if you know this, but there's definitely this sort of my advice of when cutting down chicken, the chicken naturally comes with its own sort of cheat lines or guidelines. So if you look anywhere where there's muscle, it's going to be pink, right? Because that's just the muscle. But anywhere where just like our bellies, if we don't work out, we don't have a six pack, it gets soft all the chicken fats develop where there isn't muscle. And those are the parts that usually connect, let's say, let's say the leg to the breast. There's a white line here. That's the, um, basically the fat. So those okay. are sort of our guidelines and including everywhere, like the back, the wings, everything, those, they all have these white lines. And as I go further and cut like the breast, you're going to see the white lines that are essentially the fat lines that separate the muscle to the, the, the skeletal structure of the chicken. So, if you ever, whenever in doubt, look for the fat spots, essentially. Cool. All right, I think I'm ready to go. So we can just- All right, so let me go ahead and switch over my camera here. Cool, all right, so we got this. How big is your chicken? It looks pretty big, probably looks like five pounds. Yeah, probably around there. Yeah, uh, so is there a preference for ramen of like bigger chickens, smaller chickens? The preference is to use actually stewing hens, but these these are, should be okay. Okay. The main thing we're going for is the gata, the the you know just the carcass and the bones at the end. Mm -hmm. But I, but you you have a lot of collagen in the wings and things too. So and then of course the chicken skin is used to make chiu. So yeah, got it. So all right. So I, I guess just a summary of what I'm going to be doing. Basically taking off the legs first, then sort of the skin, the wings, and the breasts, and then getting into all the sort of the crevices, the nitty gritty parts. So are we ready to go on? Are, are there any sort of immediate questions in the meantime? Everybody just saying hi from where they are. Hi from Brazil. What's up Brazil and in, uh, Indonesia? Lots of Brazilians there. Cool. All right. And so we did talk about wiping the chickens. So I'm always wiping down the chickens. That's just to get all any sort of nasty gunk stuff off. But also it's just for safety because if I'm handling the chicken, I don't want it like, and I'm holding onto the leg. I don't want it to slip out. So I'm just kind of just wiping it all with the paper towel. And then the insides as well. I too. This is dry. And then sometimes you might have um, weird sort of fatty, I don't know, gunk around it. I remove that and any feathers I'm kind of taking off at this point too. All right. All right, are we ready to go then? Ready to go. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do, I always take off the tail first. This is a, the bonjiri, the tailbone right here. So they say just slid from one end and kind of cut through. Okay. If you're having, a, all right, you're able to cut through. Sometimes with the bone might be really tricky, so you can twist it off too. Okay. So we have the, the bonjiri right here. Do you eat here. this or do you just huh? like uh, throw it away? Oh yeah, we can make this in yaktori. So right oh, here wow. on, uh, the bonji, this, there's a bone in the middle, but then this side part is very fatty and chewy. And that's what I can skewer right here. This is called aburatsubo. And this is sort of this fat gland that helps like basically, um, cover the, the, the feathers. This is 
It's very fatty. Some people would take this off at some places or just make a skewer just out of this. Oh, cool. Yeah, we all, all right, so slowly. once we got that tail off, so just very slowly, you know, if you can imagine, so there's the skin, like sort of membrane that's holding together the leg and the, and the body right here. So even if I have to slowly show you, like I'm using, let's say gravity. And if I just cut right here, the membrane, this is just for demo purpose. I, I wouldn't, I don't, I never, I don't cut like this when I'm just oh, letting okay. you know. <laughs> you know it's, it's just skin, right? That's holding the, basically the together. So normally I wouldn't do that, but basically I, I, I cut it. And then right here too, basically the, the area that's in between the leg and the body, just cut that. And once you cut through right here, then you should be able to use your hand to sort of rip it apart a little bit more. And once I have that, all right, I'm watching you. So I cut the skin on both sides. Yep. And just be careful. Don't really cut into any of the, the muscles, but if okay. you do, it's fine. Just the skin. Yeah. So once you have that, you can feel where the bone, the thigh bone connects to the body right here. So if you, if you look at my screen, so there's a bone right here and it's connecting to this area. Oh, by the way, this is an oyster, this round part right here. This is a chicken oyster. Do you feel that sort of muffin top, the yeah. two? So that's the oyster, we're gonna get that. But right here where the bone ends right here, this, we're gonna push our thumb and pop it out. I see, I see. It's gonna pop out. It was lower than I thought, okay. Okay, and then so we'll do the same on the other side. So normally if I'm doing this, I will cut, cut, and then with both hands, I'll pop, I'll pop both legs at the same time like this. So if I'm doing it quicker, I'll do this, yeah. But just for the demo purpose, I wanted to show you one and two, okay. right? So once these basic bones, and that's what I mean by we're essentially disconnecting all the muscles and the skin. We're not gonna be cutting through any bones because that's gonna mess up your knife. So we're only using our knife to sort of cut the soft areas. So once we have this, I'm gonna use my hand to sort of rip apart the skin more so I can expose more of the muscle. And then I'm gonna use a knife. And the whole point is, so you can see where the thigh connects to the body. So we're gonna be cutting that. So I'm gonna, I always start from the butt end. Now there's different shops that could start from basically sort of the top end, the oyster end, but I'm gonna do a butt end. And this is the way I did it so I can get the oyster out. So let's start with the butt end. Now I can cleanly trim it if I get really close to the bone, but I actually move it up maybe about a centimeter because I actually like this meat and I'm gonna keep this meat for some. So just, I guess for the purpose of this demo, just don't worry too much about being as close to the, the body, just cut into it. Okay. And then eventually though, you're gonna hit something that's a little bit harder and that's basically just cartilage right here. It's the, the socket that was holding the thigh into the hips. So am I supposed to be cutting at an angle towards like the chicken's butt or like uh, what, what angle at the back are we doing? Cause it, basically like I'm, I'm cutting it. along, along the body. I'm cutting, so I'm cutting along, just kind of trimming okay. this thigh off this, the body right here. And I hit something. But it, but so, okay, well, maybe maybe just watch my first, just watch this one and then we'll go over. So basically I just started cutting from the butt. I, I left some meat here and as I'm cutting, I'm gonna hit this cartilage, but it's soft. And I'm gonna keep on sort of, let's think of it as carving. And then there's gonna be a point where I come to this oyster socket. That's why I'm gonna just carve out a little bit using the tip. And then, then I can pull out right here. And this is a, where the oyster socket was. Okay. And then it, this comes off right there. So if you can imagine this whole thing, right? If you buy it at the store, the thigh, I just cut it off the body. So this is all bone, all bone. I left a little bit of me here, but you're just essentially trimming along the bone, the, the backbone, the lower backbone of the chicken. Okay, let's try. So think of it as you're just carving the thigh off. I'm like hitting something, so I'm just gonna just go up. Yeah, so that is actually the cartilage that you, you'll be able to cut through. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to that point, stop, and then you're gonna carve a little bit inside with the tip of your knife. You're gonna be able to feel that oyster. 
and there's like a socket and just ca either carve out the whole oyster or just start halfway and then you'll be able to then pull the whole leg apart and then you'll be able to get the oyster off. I don't know if I cut into the yeah. oyster. Do you want to see one more example then of this side? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll do the same thing on this side. Basically, I start from the butt area and just trimming, trimming, trimming. I, I hit this cart cartilage area, I'm just gonna yeah. cut through right there. And eventually I'm gonna get to where the oyster is the oysters is like a socket and I can, I can carve the whole oyster out, but I'm just going to maybe carve halfway at most. And then at that point I should be able to pull it off okay. and then cut the skin off. Okay. So which way do we pull from the back or the front? Uh, you're pulling it towards the front, like towards the wings. And oh, then the oyster should pop right out. Oh, okay. okay. And then do they cut the skin? Yep. Hey, I, I recognize How's your oyster looking? So if you get it, but I got it out. out, you'll you'll have this sort of round muscle on the top. I think I might have cut it, but I think we got it. Yeah, like as long as you got it, it's fine. Yeah, no one like for the purpose of yakitori, the oyster isn't like served whole like that. It's usually sort of bent over, so no one's gonna see the cut side, anyways. I'll do this side really quick. Oh, this side's way faster. As you can see, I'm not a chef, guys. I say it on all the videos. How do you? Can I feel it with my finger? Is that yeah? Better? You can sort of, sort of poke your finger in there and kind of dig it out too. That's another. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. I think I got it. Yeah. So there's definitely other okay. ways. When I first learned how to, yeah, that's good. Nice. So when I first learned how to break down a chicken, I was watching a Chef Kono. He's my friend at New York. He's in the like the eater mission star Torishin video he actually cuts it from the other way from the oyster side first carved okay. it and but i don't know i must have seen a video somewhere but i just learned the opposite way it's worked better for me so i've been doing that for like the past two years and cool. at, at the end everything that i'm cutting i want to say between all the different yakitori shops and the chefs that i've been uh, watching or learning from we're all about i want to say maybe 80 percent similar and that 20% is like a lot of personal preference or what was passed down by our masters. I see. Yeah. So should I have a little bit of skin on the butt? Okay. Yep, that's a good fatty butt skin. So let's go ahead and then from the top where it's, it's triangular, that tip, and I start carving it along the bone, this. So what, what I'm having trouble, like my knife is kind of get digging into the bone. Like how do I? Um, then they angle, angle it up so you're not digging into the bone, which is <laughs> kind of sliding across. But this is called a peta, and it is the the butt skin, very fatty, spongy. So this is a peta. Do you cut it all the way off, the entire thing? Yep, all the way. And then, so there's this part of the skin too over right here. This is this is fat. So this is for your, this this is for your chicken fat for your ramen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Noodle and Haystack has been asking me to collect this for them. So. Yep. I have a Ziploc bag full of this in the freezer. How long does it, oh, if you put it in the freezer, it probably lasts forever, right? So. All right, so basically you don't cut it all the way because look, I, oh, I cut it all the there's way. still this belly, I call this the belly skin. We want to keep that separate. So next step, what we're going to do, there's this membrane right here. This is a harami, meaning belly meat. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take my knife and just trim right where the belly meat membrane essentially ends. So it's a triangular piece. I'm cutting off the fat too with that. So look at look at my screen. It's kind of like a triangle. Mm -hmm. Along the bones. Yep. Cool. And I'll do the same with the other side. So basically harami. So this I can cut off just the pink part and make skewers from the pink part. And that's sort of like a nice uh, delicacy skewer because you can only get so much of the harami from one chicken so you'll need maybe about two or three chickens worth of harami meat just to even get like a two and a half inch skewer how do i cut it on the breast side do i just cut along the fat line or yeah yeah 
Oh, that one. Okay, cool. All right, so now we have, now we're gonna remove this breast. Oh, you're still working on the site? Go ahead. No rush, no rush. I don't want you, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you rush, you can cut your hands and stuff. Yeah. I, I definitely cut myself many times. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cool, all right. So next we're gonna undress this chicken. So basically we're gonna be pulling the skin from the bottom and it's sort of stuck by this membrane, so you gotta rip apart the membrane a bit, but you're essentially just pulling off the breast skin like this and exposing all the breast meat right here. And then I'm just gonna cut it off at the top. So this is all one breast skin that I will make into a skewer. Pack all of this into one skewer. It's very fatty, crispy. So I fold it up like a blanket, put it down here. How did you, oh, you just cut it off like a long so deal. Pull it all the way to the top. Okay. Just keep on removing all the way and then just trim. And then oh, you're okay. still gonna be left with the back skin. That's fine. So I we're see, cutting I see. all the breast skin off. The breast I skin see. and you essentially cut a little bit of the, the neck skin off too. I see, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Make a chicken. All right, now we're gonna get the breast off along with the wing. Now, if you recall, I said any part that there isn't muscle, so this is the breast muscle, you see this whole white line, that's my guideline of where I wanna cut off, right, for the breast. And also, right here, the wing, right where the sort of the wing muscle ends connects, there's also this thick fat, fatty area. So this is where it's telling me I wanna cut through. So what I'm gonna do with my knife, I guess another tip is feel where the wing, the shoulder bone has a joint. So you move around, feel where the joint is. Throwing away this paper towel soon. Yep. So right where the joint is right here, so where I can move it, there's like a socket. That's where I'm gonna just do a nice little slit. And you know what, if, if you don't know where it is, it's fine. Cause we're gonna come back to it and we're gonna get to it. So just start a slit and then in one essentially motion, gonna carve down all the way. So you remember I told you about the white line. So using that knife to just carve down where the breast meets the, the rib cage. It's gonna be carving that all the way down. Oh, I see. I'm lost the game. So flip, flip it around Brown. so that it's closer to you. Okay. So let's see. Right. So the, 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 my first cut is with the chicken's breast on the cutting board okay. and the butt facing me. Am I trying to separate the wing already at this point or? No, the wing will oh. be part of the, the breast. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm not really sure. And then do I come along this, this side here or is it? Uh... Actually, let me show you this whole process in singular and I'm gonna slow it down in the second part. Okay, that okay. might be easier for you to understand the entire concept. So I went into the, where the, the joint is right here. Okay. And then I cut all the way down Then the wing separated. Then I come around and I'm gonna come back to where that joint was using the tip of the knife. I find where that bone and the body connects. Okay. And I'm cutting right through. I'm using my knife to separate it, kind of twist and separate it. And there's that joint right here. I separate it. And then right here, this is the, the wishbone of the bird. I'm using the, my knife to carve along the wishbone. And I can either stop right here or to make it easier, we can cut all the way down. But it, essentially what we did was we cut the line here and cut the line here. I see. Now, once that's sort of Let's say we, we scored it. That's what we did. We scored the top and bottom. Once we score it, the breast comes off. Wow, okay. So once again, on this other side, let me just show you. So I'm using my knife to just cut, kind of separate where the wing and the body meets. And then using my whole knife, just carve down the breast. I'm gonna come around and come back to where that, that joint was. I can feel where the socket is use my knife and I'm gonna basically glide along the wishbone, glide along the top 
They don't have to go all the way down. If I just start it, it should now just pull off. Cool. Okay. And then that leaves the still the the ten the chicken tenders are still intact inside. Okay. All right. So now I can watch you. Yeah. Just yeah. If you have to slowly just inch by inch trim, oh, separating the breasts from the rib cage, that's totally fine. Do you go how how far do you go? Does it just? Is I want to say maybe with your knife, no more than an inch, or else you're gonna cut into the chicken tenders. Not a cut inch. Or something. It's okay. <laughs> totally fine. You're not trying to make yakitori. You're trying to make your you, you want your bones <laughs> around it. Okay. It's kind of good because if if I'm just like the average person who's never done this before. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then I kind of go around and try to. Is there's there should be a spot right where I can cut through the bone or the the joint. You're not cutting through the bone, but okay, check it out. If if this is part of the wing, uh -huh. the shoulder right here, it's like a C socket, and I'm using my knife to carve within, and this starts separating. I see it. I, I think yeah. I got it. Oh, that looks. If you ever feel a lot of resistance, that means you're cutting into the bone. That's when you back off and then try another angle. Okay, I think I got it. Some nicks on the bone, but I think we're good. And then, then okay, then cut across the wishbone, like glide across the wishbone. You're just trimming across the wishbone and then come all the way up to sort of that the chest, I guess, is it the sternum, like that, the, the, the rib, yeah. the, the chest part, and just cut, go all the way. You don't have to go all the way down, but maybe on your first try, just go all the way down mm -hmm. to help score it. If I'm going fast, I just stop right where the wishbone ends, and then I just rip off. But nice. yeah, for, for in your case, to yeah, just score it all the way down. <laughs> okay. All right. And then? And then hold the body and then hold the entire wing and pull it down towards your stomach. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got some stuff still connected. Maybe you got some, like, you got like a tender. Yeah. Or tendon, I mean. Yep. See? Yeah. Oh, sick. Nice. This is like six bucks in the store already. Right exactly. Here. Exactly. And as I said, it's so much more fresh pressure if you get in a whole chicken because all that skin has been protecting that breast whereas a breast that's already been pre-cut it's just being exposed to the air for who knows how long on that shelf it's true so when i make you know a lot of people complain about how breast is dry and it is compared to like the thigh meat but when you get it from a whole chicken it's actually not that dry when you make yakitori from the the breast of the whole chicken This knife is so sharp, it's just cutting through the bone too. So it's kind of- Yeah. Good. It won't stay sharp if you keep on cutting through the bone though. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any um, questions? I can't, I, I'm not looking at the screen. Uh, you guys have any questions? I can read it for Yakitori guy here. I wonder if I, I can read it off the, my- They're just trying to get up the live stream. I can read it off my phone while you cut. <sighs> if you guys have any questions about Yakitori or breaking out chickens, Feel free to put in the chat and show well, uh, answer them while I'm trying to struggle through this. Nope, it just says, yeah, people are just saying what's up and whatnot. So that's good. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are learning from this. I love, I really love teaching this because I think it's just like a basic skill that everyone, you know, can learn like, changing your car tire, right? Like just, if you just learn it, it's gonna help you. Okay, okay I think I got it. So. Okay. And then if you get something resistant, that means there's still like a, like a tendon holding it, but yeah, you got everything off, so good. All right, great. So let's go on to the next step, okay? We're gonna now, we have these two, the chicken tenders, which, you know, a lot of people before yakitori, I, I feed them my tender skewers and yakitori. They just think chicken tenders are just chicken strips you get, you know, like at a baseball game, deep fried. But these are actually the tenderloins, the opposite muscle to the, the breast. So what we're going to do, similar to how we did the breast, we're going to, I'm going to use my knife to sort of trim the tender away from the bone. I'm just kind of cutting. So this is the, the bottom of the, okay, the bottom side. And then now the top, you would think, cut the whole thing. No, actually just start maybe like halfway through. And I'll show you why. 
So this, I'm gonna start halfway through for the top part. In the bottom, we're gonna go all the way through. And I'll show you why. Because then to remove, all right, ready? So I'm gonna uh, come with thumb. Start from the bottom, halfway through the, from the middle to the bottom or from the top yeah, to the Yeah, yeah, halfway from the middle to the, yeah. Let's call it from the middle to, I guess, more closer to the tail. That's probably a better accurate screw. So to remove it though, I know you you try to pull it from the tail. It's actually from this end. Okay. I'm gonna, there's a white piece of tendon right here. I see it, I see it. And grab that as a handle and pull down. Sometimes it's slippery if you don't have nails too. Um, so I use like a paper towel to hold onto it. But as I pull it down, you see this membrane coming off? This is membrane that's part of the, the tender that remained on the chicken. Whoa. And if we had cut the whole top off, it won't remain there. So this is just like a, you know, extra like master's trick. Don't cut it all the way through so you can leave that membrane on. Or else you have to remove the membrane from these uh, 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 chicken tenders and maybe doing one or two removing membranes. That might not be hard, but if you have to do 30 of these, <laughs> that extra step of removing membrane, you know, you can leave a membrane on a chicken. So that's basically the little master sip. So let's go ahead and do that on the other side, stick our finger in and then grab that, that white piece of right here, the, the hard, the tendons and just pull it right out. Wow, super, super cool. Amazing. Cool. All right, let's go on to the next step right here. This, on this tip part right here, this is a soft bone cartilage. So we're gonna just cut right through. So there's a part where the, it's hard bone and then it turns white and that's the softer part that you can just nice. slice right through. And then you can just rip the rest off. So this I can make cartilage. You just Yep, it's called uh, yagen nankotsu. So nankotsu means cartilage, and uh, you, you, if you get like maybe three or four of those stacked, it's a it's a skewer, crunchy crunchy yakitori skewer. Okay, mm -hmm. next, turn it over. We're gonna pull this the the back skin off. The back skin is similar to the butt skin. It's pretty fatty, not as fatty as the the butt skin, but it's fatty because it's connected to the neck skin. So on the top is it's you can kind of feel like spongy. That's oh. the neck. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Oh, I'm, I haven't been organizing my pieces. I've just been throwing them into a computer. <laughs> it, it definitely helps, like, <laughs> for me when I have a bunch of these, when I, I can just stack up, you know, five of the, the chicken tails, five of the back. So when I'm making the skewers later, it helps me. So this is, like, my organization bin. Okay. Um, okay, and then, so we still want to trim as much as we can off here. So earlier, I left this, I want to say, butt area of the thigh cut that off. And the reason why I like this area, there's a little bit of cartilage stuck on that. And so this is thigh meat, but with sometimes maybe a little crunch or two in there, the cartilage. I think I cut it wrong. Hold on. Let's see if I... And then the other side too. Yeah, I, I want to show your uh, your community how to make all these skewers, but we definitely don't have time for that. No, but, no, but on my YouTube channel, they can, they can also so can go channel, on YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Yep. I think yeah. we'll have time to make maybe one, whatever your favorite one. I think it might be negima. Negima. Yep. Okay. I'm, it's, it's like the tonkotsu of yakitori, right? Negima is like the uh, the one that everybody likes. Yeah, especially because of that onion. It's just so it's it's so flavorful because of the onions and usually negima usually is with tare, so it's just a very yeah. standard. Yeah. All right. So there's still some meat on it. You know, we can definitely grab more meat. Okay. Right here. Uh, this is the back shoulder. So you feel that? Yeah, yeah. That's basically, and then we're gonna be carving across the shoulder blade. This is the. Sh back shoulder muscle. So right here, there's a shoulder blade bone and we're just using our knife to, to carve across that. And we get this nice 
really chewy, sort of in between a dark meat and white meat. So this one, do you go from the back side to the towards the head? Or I'm the going head? from the top to bottom, as in like shoulder down to tail. It's a long strip. And it's so funny, like I always, we used to always like scold our students at my, my other business about just watch before you try to do anything. And uh -huh. I'm doing basically exactly what they do that make us irritated. Like I'm just not even watching and I'm just <laughs> That's fine. You get this when you teach as, long as, as long as you're having fun, that's all I care about. And as long as uh, basically you're around the community, if they're watching my screen and they can learn something. So yeah, go ahead and watch you. Oh, I think I messed this one up. I oh, okay. got, I got so, on the so don't one. hold the body. Hold, don't the, hold the body. Hold it. Hold yep. it. And then let the gravity essentially hold down the body. Let me see. Yep. I did better on the last one. I think I got more of it than the first one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Soup. It's going to go in soup anyway. Okay. So then we have lastly, there's a little bit of meat left on this neck part. So we're going to grab this neck meat. And this chicken, my chicken that I got, it has a, like a shorter neck. Some of the chickens maybe have like another two. And obviously if you get like a whole chicken with the head on, you're going to mm. get like this much neck. Oh, I see. Yeah. But outside of Asian markets, I think it's very hard to find uh, chickens with like a very long neck or the head on it. So you, you see that shoulder blade bone right here? I'm yeah. actually just going to trim that off right where the shoulder blade is. And then, then I can basically pull this apart like this. So when making your chicken, basically soup from like, you know, for ramen, do you roast your chicken bones? So that's, this has kind of been like a big thing in the ramen community now with mm -hmm. I'm sure me, Mike stories and things. I think I lost yeah. half of this bone there. It's the, okay. When, in the West, it's traditionally like you roast the bones, right? And then you yeah. boil it from there. But in Japan, for ramen, they just boil it, pre-boil the bones. And even people have told me, you don't even do anything. You just kind of clean it and, and you go straight from there into soup making. So I'm not really, not really sure the proper way. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this anyway. So I'm going to do a video to test like what's the best way to get. Nice. Roasting. Yeah, so traditionally for, or, uh, for, for yakitori, we use every part of this chicken, including the bones. The bones is always safe for the soup at the end. Uh, and all my meals, we end with this chicken rice ball soup, where I have been traditionally doing it with uh, just the bone as is. I don't have time to roast it. Basically, once I'm done, it's going into this pot. So, you know, I throw this in there with some, there's some onions in there. Um, but lately, because I've been doing a lot of these summertime outdoor bean jotan cooking, I've been roasting these bones and with bean jotan smoke and the soup becomes really amazing though. Like once like oh, smoke soup. Yeah. So, but maybe it might be too much for like ramen. Yeah. I guess it depends what you're going for. If you're going for a real clean. Yeah. Down. So, all right, we have this neck. I want to say with this neck, I'm using my sort of fingers to make it into more of a mohawk kind of pinch it into a mohawk. Then I can just trim that mohawk off. Now, tradition, the easiest way is to go straight across and cut that mohawk. But then if you want to get all the nitty gritty, every part of the uh, meat you can, you have to go in zigzag form and kind of go side to side to get the side neck meat muscle right here and the, so this is this is more like sort of advanced cut so maybe for you kind of just <laughs> try, don't tell myself maybe yeah but just, you can just try cutting it straight across okay. the sort of neck but for me i wanted to get as much neck as possible so i went sort of zigzag zigzag up down up down getting the side pieces this is a technique that i learned from chef kono when i went to his restaurant and the meat will give the soup flavor. So, so yeah, we have basically neck. Yeah, yeah, mine's looks terrible, but yours looks great. <laughs> cool, man. I lost part of this bone here, this, but uh, I think that's okay. I think we're good. Oh, and then so okay, right here we have the wing 
Comes okay. off the press. That's pretty straightforward. Looking at the clock, 18 minutes. <laughs> what can we get done in 18? Do you got so much to go or? I'm not in a time rush. I'm not in a time rush either. So if we have to go a little bit over, we can go a little bit over. Because I really want to show, have you show people how to do the Nigima at least. The yeah, at least skier and then. And then, and like I said, they can always go to your I mean, we, we can also just jump onto Instagram Live too. Yeah. For just the skiering portion. You can keep the party going. Huh? Can you keep the party going? Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, oh, did you do the, th the thighs too? Or did, did I? So the thigh, <laughs> we'll do that for the Negima, but I just wanted to show you these are essentially, so in my camera right here, this, all the parts that we got from One Whole Chicken, including the carcass right here. So we have basically the thighs, the wings, the breasts, and the there's a chicken tail, the butt, butt skin, the back skin, the belly meat, belly skin, all of the breast skin right here, and some chicken fat. Got the two tenders, chest cartilage, got the two shoulders, neck, and then I call this sort of the butt thigh area. So this is what you can yield from basically one four and a half pound chicken. Yeah, and then this this torigata is what we use to make ramen. So we usually just take this guts out, take the guts part out from here. Yeah. And a lot of the Japanese chefs tell me like pre-boil, but a lot of the American chefs tell me don't pre-boil. So I'm not really sure what's the right way. But then this Got is it. kind of like what we're looking for for ramen. So. Cool. So you said you wanted to make negima. Let's go ahead yep. and do that. So what I'm going to do, and I always recommend this for anyone who's trying to make yakitori at home is, with chicken, it's, it's better to keep the temperature as low as possible. Keep, it's, it's, um, as, it get, as it's warming up, even in this room temperature, it starts sweating, you know, like all the, the flavors and juices are sweating out. And I want to keep all that in. So whatever ones that I'm not going to work with. So right now, we, we're going to work on these chicken, basically the, the thigh. So I'll keep this one leg out. I guess I, I'll keep both of these legs out. But everything else goes into the fridge. I'm just gonna just put them in the fridge. Keep it cool. Oh. My fridge is packed. I don't know how your fridge is. I think my wife helped me out and she cleaned it out, so I think we're good on my side. Down the space. Oh. Cool. Let's switch it back to the other camera for a second. Sort of tidy up. I'll go back to the other view. Any questions on the chicken cutting part for people? If not, for like the next 15 minutes, we can just work on these uh, these thighs. I should cut some green onions with another cutting board. Um, I'm looking for questions. Doesn't really seem to have much questions. They're just okay. saying knob and like cool. chicken like this chicken just sashimi. Whatever you do, don't cut yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying the best. <laughs> someone, someone talked to, asked about chicken sashimi. So we're not having chicken sashimi with the chickens here, but in Japan, you can't have chicken sashimi. Pretty much chicken breast sashimi, tender sashimi, heart, gizzard, liver, I've had as chicken sashimi in Japan. Someone asked, okay. in your yakitori shop, would you do this? What would you do with the trimmings and carcass? Oh, you kind of answered that, right? The soup, you do the soup at the end. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, nothing gets wasted. Yeah. How many chickens do you do in one day? 
depends on how big the dinners are. Uh, you told me that you can do one chicken like four to five minutes, right? So it doesn't usually take you 40 minutes <laughs> to do one chicken breakdown. So. Yeah, so from one chicken, I can make about maybe 24 skewers, 24, 25 skewers, if I use every part of the chicken. If I actually use every single part of the chicken, which the breast is really big, I can make probably 28 skewers, 28, 29 skewers, but I don't, cause that's just too much breast to feed my guests. So I leave it around like 24 with only two skewers of the breast. Um, so from one chicken to the 25 skewers, that takes me about maybe 15 minutes to an hour. And then, so if I'm doing, I usually do five chickens for like a party of 10 for like my dinners that are for 10 people. So for five chickens for 10, um, it'll basically be about maybe four hours to skewer those every part of the chicken. Yeah. The chicken breast is, do you generally use that for, for yakitori a lot? Or is it more like people don't generally? So I have one skewer that they get that is with the chicken breast, but I don't want to get people full on chicken breast. So um i use a chicken breast for other things you know save it during the week for just to eat or i, I make it for doggy treats so i, I have oh, my, yeah. my yakitori dogs uh doggy treat sort of thing that i have my little side side hustle going on <laughs> so, so as i said nothing goes to waste every part of the chicken we use so Ch the chicken breast is actually like the preferred cut for chicken chashu for ramen so kind of works out really yeah well. so I, uh, okay i use okay because for my dinners these are like 25 item dinners so out of that 20 of them are skewers and five are additional side items including like desserts and whatnot but one of the side items i had in the beginning i stopped making it because i got bored of it was we call it chicken hamu so basically oh yeah yeah yep. sous vide sort of chicken yeah. breads it's the same as a chashu way mm -hmm. but i just i, I kind of got bored of making that so i stopped <laughs> but um, ramen Lab Q in Sapporo, though, that I went with Ramen Lord. They make a really awesome chicken chashu, though. Nice. Like super, I, I think they sous vide theirs, and so super soft, super flavorful. All right, so ready to make some uh, negima? Yep, we're gonna, well, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna watch you, and okay. then we're gonna figure it out. Cool. Let's go ahead and, uh, here we go. Good thing. So yeah, I think you have some really nice uh, negi right there. So mine right here. I, I do want to, I do want to give like one tip. Um, a lot of the people who follow my tutorials and I see them making negi ma, try to get really thick onions. So this is like a centimeter thick, and this is I don't know, like six millimeter, five, like half a centimeter, maybe six millimeter. This is way too thin for negi ma. Uh, it just shrivels up when you cook these. But then if you have a nice thick one, it stays nice and crunchy. And then in Japan, they have ones that are even thicker than these, right? Like the Tokyo Negi that you find in store. I think yours are pretty thick, right? That My dad grows them. I think they're not anything special, but he just, he was a farmer before he was a business guy. So then yeah. he kind of knows how to grow things. So I might do okay. a video. Yeah, not that, negi. I, yeah, I thought they might be the, the Tokyo Negi style. Oh, these are just regular green onions. That you figured out. Oh, yeah, those are nice, nice, nice thick sizes. Yeah, those are plenty thick. All right, so what we want to do with these so I want to show sort of the easy way of okay. butchering these, these, these chicken legs, which is um, just separating the drumstick and the thigh. So remember earlier, as I said, wherever you see with, with the white, that's kind of the separating all the muscles. So if you look at where the chicken drumstick and the thigh, sort of this, if you bend it, there's a, it's a V shape. And right here, there's white fat line. Your knife would just easily just go right through. And you can separate. Okay, that is enough. Here we go. Hitting something. It's you will hit a little bit of cartilage, but it won't be bone if you run okay. the Yeah. But if you if it's really hard, then you may be hitting bone. <laughs> Probably bone, but that's okay. I got I got around it. So. All right. So that's the drumstick and the thigh. And I think this way is just much more easier for most people to handle because then they see the thigh, they see the drumstick. The traditional, most com more common yakitori shop ways though, they don't cut this off until the very end. They actually start with this drumstick and they're cutting straight into the bone right here, all the way down this, uh, I want to call it like sort of the back knee 
So the joint area, and then right here, they're using the knife to cut across the bone. And then essentially just sort of fillet out the bone. I'm not and, gonna even try that, I'm just gonna watch. Yeah, so then it's, then, then you have basically the bone and the muscle is just separated. So if I sh showed you, it's, then you can essentially just pull apart the muscle from the bone. Same with this side, it's kind of carved. And then we got the bones right here, throw that into the soup. So we can do the same thing. So I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna show you that way, but for this side, so you have this thigh. You see this white line right here? Okay. We're gonna cut right there and then you hit the bone, but you're gonna to go to the one side of the bone and then basically carve on the other side of the bone where you can sort of spread the muscle over and then just carve along the bone. Then use your knife to just kind of, I wanna say the trim. This is just trim off the bone from the thigh. Oh, did you have to get it off really? I feel like I'm leaving a lot of meat on the bone. Maybe I didn't go at the right angle. So there's two things. One, yeah, there's an angle issue, but also when your chicken is not as firm, mm -hmm. which could either be the chicken was just left out in like warmer temperature as it's been for like the past hour for us, okay. or if it's a little bit older chicken, as in uh, not older, but um, not as fresh chicken, obviously the meat sort of softens up. And then kind of fattier chicken versus non-fattier chicken, right? So if it's um, pasture raised, they're gonna have much more firmer muscle. And then sort of these broiler chickens that we're using, they're gonna be a little bit soft. So even when you're trimming it off the, the meat off the bone, it doesn't come off as cleanly. Would you just what did you do here? You just kind of kept trimming it down. Kind of, yeah. Use the tip of the knife and carve around. There's a knee cartilage that I'm actually going to leave on the thigh side right here. I feel like I'm just mangling it. Oh, there we go. How much of the cartilage is supposed to stay on the thigh? Mm, this like a little square, <laughs> sort of white yellow part that I'm leaving on there as a little crunchy piece for a, a, one skewer that I made, which is called a knee knee cartilage lollipop. I just leave this cartilage on there. I see. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this part. So that that's that's deboning the thigh, and then the other part that I showed you is basically deboning the, the drumstick. So if you just put your bone, if you put your knife right where the bone is and you're essentially carving along the bone. All the way through? Yeah, so even when you go all the way through with your knife, it actually doesn't go all the way. The, the, you, you think you'll cut through the skin, it actually never does. Okay. Like even if I go as hard as I want down, it never cuts through the skin. Okay. And then, so I just cut through and then I feel like the skin is just so fatty and oily. It just kind of lubricates and slides right off. So if you can see my screen, basically I just kind of carved this way and carved this way. So now I have this bone in the middle. And then I'm just gonna use the tip of the knife and go underneath. And that way I got the bottom right here. At this point, I should be able to also just pull it right off. So this is basically what the deboned leg looks like. And if you see all these white stuff, these are the Achilles tendons. And that's what makes the, the drumstick meat very crunchy. So I play around with that crunchy texture versus the thigh, which is all tender texture. So that's why I separate it so I can it's not all one, you know, it's dark meat, but they're definitely different textures. And that is the, 
the beauty of yakitori is by separating out the textures, you can have people enjoy different textures of each of the skewers versus one whole chicken, which is sort of the, the rotisserie chicken where everything sort of tastes the same. Okay, stuck now. Do I just cut under the bone? Yeah, okay. stick your knife in and yeah. Sorry, I know it's taking a long time. You probably expected someone who's better with a knife. All right. Then, uh, we just cut around this? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Have the, like this. Yep, and then pull it all the way down and then you can just chop off whatever is still stuck. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And I have to oh. I saw wipe my phone later. <laughs> Okay, we got two minutes. All right. So I think we, we can we can just continue this video. Oops, continue this video until we finish at least making this negima, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's no rush. We'll, we'll we'll shut it down. And if, if you want to take it to a more casual uh, maybe session on Instagram Live, where we can just grill beer. Um, and beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have, let's make, I wanna show you two different negimas. I wanna show you negima with the thigh and then the negima with the leg part. But before we cut basically the thigh apart, we actually wanna be very respectful to this thigh and acknowledge that it has unique parts that are different, that have different textures. So if you can see, I have laid out my thigh here on this camera. On top, we know where the oysters are. So these are the, the oysters right here. And then on the opposite side of the sort of the opposite side where we cut apart the thigh, we're gonna see something almost near the size of an oyster right here. You see one meat that's a little bit, that pops out. So yeah. that's the inner thigh filet. In Japan, at the shops, they call this the akami, red meat, or the total, just like on tuna, the fatty yeah. area. So we're going to trim that off and save that. It's a nice, special, very tender part. So we'll cut that on both sides. And so I use this for a skewer that I make along with the chicken tail. I'm going to throw this other thigh piece in the skirt. Okay. All right. Okay, so you got the fillet out, the inner thigh. Now let's cut off the oyster. So for that, I'm just gonna, basically, you have to cut into the skin. So you're gonna have to go with some force, cut into the skin. And I just cut it pretty much as a rectangle. Just get that oyster cut. the other side. So you got the oyster out. All right. So we're going to save this for another skewer. Actually, let me grab that skewer real quick. I just need the tail. Cool. So remember that tail? that I said, nice and fatty. It's gonna trim off the sides from where it's not bone. And go ahead and make these skewers real quick. Pretty much my sort of signature skewer that I call the, the tender combination skewer. Uh, we start with the tail and the inner thigh and then end it with the oysters. Here, so tail, inner thigh. There we 
oysters right here. The most tender bite you can get. So you can make that too right now. You don't have to get the tail. You can just do that inner thigh and the oysters on top. I had my skewers out and then I got the lid. <laughs> How are you going to make yakitori with no skewers? <laughs> I got it. I got it. Right All right. Um, you can do that later. Let's go ahead and just make yeah. your negima. So for this negima, all right, so the, the thigh we just cut. Let's see. So the thigh has this one longer strip on one side. I don't know how to explain it. So if we pull it, okay. There's gonna be this one end that's gonna be straight. Is that the side with the fat? Like a little bit? Yes. Of fat? Okay. I'm going to cut basically about an inch wide that. And if you cut it right, there should be basically the cartilage on the bottom. I actually cut off my cartilage. <laughs> I don't know if I did it right, but. I think it's going to be so much harder looking at the screen and <laughs> looking down. All right. So I'm going to make a, a skewer where I'm poking through the cartilage and the thigh. And then I'm going to take one of my thinner niggy. Then poke through, poke through. So this is a skewer where this this part of the thigh is really fatty. So I made this one, and it's, you can see all this fat just kind of coming off the side. So this cooks up very well. And then, so the fat with the crunchy cartilage and the green onion inside, all one bite. And so this is the new cartilage lollipop. And you, you were saying, I, I watched your videos, you said all skewer into the table, right? And you're skewering. Yep, your so, thing. okay, yeah, another technique is definitely, let's go ahead and do this piece. So with skewering, I have basically my two hands, but then the cutting board has friction. So definitely, and gravity acts as another hand. And you never really skewer in the midair. You always want to skewer into the cutting board. So in my case, so I'm going to skewer into the cutting board. And then I've got some green onion. And then, yeah, basically just, I'm always skewering it at an angle into the cutting board. And the main reason for that is there's only two axes, X and Y axis of variations. I can go up or basically front, back, side, side. But if I do it in midair, I have three directions, X, Y, Z axis. And that means your skewers are never gonna be really consistent. So just to keep consistency, I do that. All right, so now we have these thigh meats left. So if you turn around, you're gonna see sort of the muscles going this way, right? The muscles go up and down somewhat uh -huh. on your thigh that you basically, it's that you fillet it open. Yeah. So the direction of the bone, mm -hmm. we're gonna cut across that. Oh, I see, okay. And that makes it much more easier to skewer. If we go with basically the, if we cut the direction of the bone, when we flip it and try to skewer it, it becomes very hard to skewer it through. So I'm going to flip it over with the skin side up and then cut it, basically cutting it across where the bone would have been. My skin is like falling off. It's so hot over here in Hawaii. In Hawaii. The fat is like oh yeah, so that's the other thing too. With yakitori, that's why you want to keep it cool is you have the issue of just the temperature. Okay, so since you have lots of negi, I'm going to recommend you to skewer one negi first like this mm -hmm. down into a skewer. I don't have that much negi right now, or at least thick ones that I want to use. So I'm going to skip one of the, for you, you're going to have two negis, okay? okay? So imagine if I had a negi in here, I'm pulling this one out. But then skewer, take these strips. So poke skin and meat 
Roll it and then poke meat through the skin. See, this looks, this part looks so easy, but you make it look so easy, but I don't, I feel like it's not as easy as it, it looks. I think, well, maybe it's my chicken uh, is melting. The, the, the warmth is affecting you because I think your yeah. chicken is getting a little bit slimy right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then I think it's just little subtle things too, though. But you know how we cut it uh, against the direction of the bone? Mm -hmm. That actually helped a lot because if we did it the other way, it will be even more harder to skewer what you just did because you'll be fighting. It's going to be like trying to leave the side of the skewer. I missed the skin. And what I just did was I just I just trimmed off the sides to make it a little bit neater. But yours would, yeah, you, you will have one more nigga on the bottom. Mine I only put in the middle. Yeah, I'm fighting the the heat here. My yeah. chicken is just melting. I think I think that's what's happening. Yeah. The pros and cons of living in Hawaii. I don't have AC either. Uh, okay. And what is it like 90 degrees right now? Like 89, I think. Yeah. Close to 89 degrees. Yeah, your your chicken's melting for sure. Yeah, definitely melting. Okay. Well, let's just let you finish up real quick and then uh Yeah, so okay, so this is my Negima right here. Now I, I said I wanted to make two different Negima, so I want to show you guys yeah. because with the chicken thigh. It's very nice and tender. Whereas the chicken legs are a little bit crunchy because of these Achilles tendons. But I use that to my advantage and kind of combine it with another crunchy piece, which would be, in this case, I have some, some whole onions. So these are just crunchy, crunchier onions. So just wanted to show you this is another another yakitori. And both of these are considered negima. Negi means onion and ma be, me, means in between. So both of these are chicken in between onions. So both of these are negima. So just as an example, basically, sort of two different nice sort of experiences. Of, it's all one chicken leg, but this is a thigh. It's going to be nice and soft and juicy. And then the, the, the leg, the, the drumstick is juicy, but it's also going to be crunchy. So. Very cool, man. Let me cool. watch. We can... We can finish up here and then we can yeah up. i'll just finish up with these last of the skewers but see if anyone has any questions if not we can wrap this up on youtube and then maybe clean up a bit and let's go on uh, instagram let's change it up a bit. <laughs> i'm just ground. struggling my chicken is it's so warm here and my chicken is yeah. not feeling it so. oh and another thing so you might see all these trimmings so this <laughs> Grind it in a food processor, ground chicken, and then you can make uh, basically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and switch to the other camera. Do you want to skewer another one? I think you should just finish up skewering. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm gonna just I'm gonna finish skewering it as we just wrap this up. If anyone has any questions. Any someone time. asked. If, someone asked if that's a big yakitori size that you're doing. A yakitori what? Like, you know, that the one that you did with the skin, I think that's kind of like your signature style, right? Where you put the skin on the, uh, with the thigh, with the negima. Mm -hmm. Is it bigger than the other, the other style of negima that they, they, they do in Japan? Or, or is that kind of like the new way, the new way to do it? Or? Uh, so I want to say this is more of the higher end way. I see, so I see. With, with yakitori, there's just kind of like burgers, how there's gourmet burgers. Then there's sort of McDonald's, and then, then there's in between, and then there's burgers you make at home variation. And the thigh with the skin on is a little bit trickier. Because I mean, I, th I think you're, even when you were trying to make it, 
you know, the skin was slipping off and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. imagine if you had a skin off and you had pre-cut blocks of thigh, that's probably going to be a lot more easier to just make. And I think that's yeah. the most people are probably used to seeing that negima. I that see. As yeah, that's what I've, I've eaten before in the past too, is just the one with the meat and the, the negi in between. But that makes sense that it's, it's more, it requires more skill to make. So it's a higher class negima. That makes a lot it of sense. It takes a little bit, not just skill, but more time. But at the end result is you, you get the benefit of, um, you'll see when I grill these though, it's, you get this crispy skin and then yeah. you get the juicy meat underneath. So you kind of get the, the two different textures. So yeah, there's like basically the just, traditional sort of festival food or street food, 7-Eleven type of yakitori, the, the $1 skewers. Then there's a places where like a mission star place where your whole yakitori meal will cost like $250. And wow. there's just all the variance and degrees. And I really fell in love with that. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive, but at least the kodawari, like the more higher end or well thought mm. style of like you know doing like a combination like this where it's like all the 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 tender parts are on one skewer and i have a, a opposite skewer to this is all crunchy stuff on one skewer but yeah we we can talk about yakitori for on and on and on <laughs> you know it's so right cool now. because like you know I've, I've i have i'm everybody knows that i'm not like a ramen chef i'm just learning this whole channel is just about me learning how to do things but it's I've met a lot of people that are the equivalent of you in ramen. You know, like, you know, Mike, Mike ramen yeah. lard and everything like that. There's like, yeah. there's a lot of people like him are scattered across the world that are just like, they can talk about making ramen for like forever. And I think yeah. for your study, it's very yeah. similar for you. For me. Yeah. Um, another thing that's, uh, I found out that a lot of people don't, can't see yet. Um, but then I, I figured I, I can start seeing is there's a lineage sort of watermarks in every yakitori. So my style, I know if someone's like using my particular style mm -hmm. and I can, I can look at some yakitori shop and I, I know what masters they actually came from. Even in Japan, even within Tokyo, there's a few different styles. So there's like in the New York shop, like I know that lineage to like the Tokyo shop. So uh, that's pretty cool. it's been kind of interesting. Like even within America, like I just, today I found someone who was doing this yakitori in LA and then I kind of was like, trying to figure out like where he learned and I look closely and, it, and then I, I can tell that it actually came from a shop here in San Francisco. So like there's a certain That's so cool. that yeah. within sort of this, it's like sizing, spacing, the shape, or even the use of what negi they're using on the mm -hmm. negima. Like those are like signature things that um, can be passed on or copied or whatever it is but yeah are you do you have like your your disciples yet coming up that you're going to be like oh that's the yaki gang style of making uh yeah, no that's, i that's i, I think i'm similar to mike and like i i freely give like I, I i show everyone my stuff and hopefully like because when i make styles that i've learned from my masters or my friends i always tag them or i always call it like this is my yakitori baka style heart um, and so then they start following, you know, my, my teacher in Japan. Right. Um, I hope that's what people do. Uh, and, and I've seen that, which is kind of cool. Like some people will make this skewer and they, they call this like the yakitori guys skewer. I was like, Oh, cool. You know, it's like, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Yeah, man. So if everybody who's watching is interested in this, check out yakitori guy on YouTube. He has a channel. He's teaching basically all of everything that he knows on there. He's not holding things back. I'm right? still learning, and that's the fun part. But yeah, I'm, yeah, that's why my YouTube cool. videos are very long too, because I feel <laughs> like there's so much subtle details that I want to explain. That like cut on the direction of the bone, you know, like those kind of things that I was trying to teach you. I don't like. I don't. I don't. No one teaches that, and I only learned from just trial and error and just seeing it myself. I was like, oh wait, this is way easier to skewer it this way or cut it this way. So. Yeah, yeah. So Yakitori guy on YouTube, check that channel out. And then should we keep doing this on Instagram live? Finish up the rest of your things? Or? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, these ones that we grill, we skewer, let's put them on the grill. I want to okay. get grab a beer and uh, we'll keep it a little bit more casual because it's not being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys all so much for watching. And uh, let yeah, me know if you guys, guys. If you have any questions for Yakitori guy, I'll send it to him too. And follow him on Instagram. Yakitori. Instagram, YouTube. But yeah, it, I'm just excited to, to show you guys Yakitori. So whoever wants to learn, I'm here for you guys. All right. Uh, check out the party on Instagram right after this. So we're going to get set up for that. And I'll see you guys all there. Thanks for all tuning right, in. See you guys. Thanks for watching.